think it matters because we are uh, we all have to reproduce to continue our species. So it is is very true that uh, that it relates to all of us. So it is an extremely curious question scientifically, but also practically. So I do not call myself the um, reproductive biologist, but rather developmental biologist. But reproduction is some as is one of the important aspects of our research, which is critical. So when you think about the reproduction, uh, you think about specific uh, early stages of development that relates to, re to reproduction. When you think about developmental biology, you think more about development of the embryo, about acquiring uh, patterning in development, breaking symmetry, specifying different organs. I'm not sure whether we can call this reproduction in a sense of strictest term, but we can call it developed biology. So I am interested in early stages of our life, so I try to understand how the egg first becomes fertilized and then after fertilization develops into the embryo. How it acquires its specific polarity, how the embryo acquires pattern, so how the ball of cells that look first quite uh, quite simple and seems to be composed of naive cells, so cells that all look the same, now suddenly become differentiated into different types of cells and how those cells talk to each other, so interact with each other to grow and develop something as amazing as ourselves. So it relates to reproduction, obviously, but it's also the question of cell-cell interactions it's also the question of how stem cells arise and function. So it's a lot of questions mm -hmm. within that developmental biology slash stem cell biology field that I represent. Yes, so of course, yes, because I'm trying to understand how first oocyte matures and develop its unique power of being fertilized and then give rise to all of the cells of the future embryo that will develop into the organism. So the beginning of what I study is really related to the act of fertilization uh, and what sperm contributes to it apart from bringing DNA as we know from a long time. It, turn out, it turns out now that sperm also brings other factors such as small RNAs that direct how the message that it provides will be read. Uh, so I'm very interested in how sperm initiate the process of development and equally how it is that egg become equipped by the mother when it is maturing in the mother's body with all of the information that later become acquired during developmental process. The specialization that we, spe we, we have in the lab, the, the particular question that we are addressing in the lab is how cells become different from each other, when and how does this happen? and we try to track the journey of those cells as development progresses. Uh, in the context of the mouse development, this is the first week of mouse embryo life. In the context of human development, this is the first two weeks of human development life. So we try to understand how those cells are generated and then how, to t how they talk to each other to establish the distinct um, fate uh, to, to break symmetry. so very little about development of human egg and this is largely because until very recently we could study development of human egg until the seventh day of its life so when it becomes embryo called blastocyst and we couldn't understand uh, what happens further at the time of embryo implantation so at least the work in our lab aimed to um, uncover this, as we call it, black box of development and try to understand how embryo, which is very simple in its structure at the blastocyst stage on the seventh day of its life, become much more complex structure um, on the day 14. So I believe that one of the important aspects of, of human uh, developmental biology or human reproduction will be this 
a part of the development when embryo become dependent on the body of the mother, implants within the body of the mother, develop a unique relationship with the body of the mother and start to grow for the first time. And the cells which are initially, there's a group of cells called epiblasts, they, they, they are naive at that stage of their life and they have to split into two unique fates. Part of the epiblast will form the baby and another part will form the amnion. And how the split uh, happens is not not known and I think it's a very important aspect of, uh, of our reproduction uh, to understand and I am interested in it as a scientist. Uh, but there are many other aspects of development I've mentioned it is now known that in the mouse um, mouse sperm provides more than just DNA and it's not known whether human sperm also have more profound function than providing DNA and that's this aspect of research I don't do myself, but many of my colleagues do, and I think it's fascinating. Um, I also think that we still don't understand how exactly the information uh, provided, patterning information provided within the human egg become realized throughout developmental progression. So to which extent the egg is uniform and become patterned as development progresses because of developmental events rather than by being pre-patterned before fertilization happens? This is a very challenging question, has been an extremely controversial question, even in mouse field, mouse development field, mouse reproduction field, because it's main model system to understand human development, not because we care so much how mice develop, but because we care how human embryos develop, and mouse has been the most common system studied by us and Anne McLaren. Uh, so we try to understand how those things that we discover important principles of development that we discover in mouse context, to which extent those things apply to human embryo development. You know that many pregnancies fail at the very early stages, spontaneously, um, within these first two weeks of our life, of embryo life. So the question is how it is so. So can we really uncover what happens at the time of implantation? But of course I'm biased because that's the model system that we have now opened to study two years ago and we are enchanted by that moment of embryo life because it's so little known about it and we can now reveal what happens to development of the human embryo that for example is mosaic, that's mean composed of both normal and abnormal cells that live side by side, to which extent those abnormal cells will be eliminated and normal cells will take over we can call it the process of repair, to which extent this happens in human development. Uh, we don't know whether those embryos that have some trisomies or monosomies are indeed developmentally failing at the time of implantation or later. So there are so many questions that now can be addressed. So I imagine that from our perspective, this is one of the very important questions that have been not uh, approach before because of the technical uh, inability. But there are also those questions about uh, very uh, act of fertilization per se and contribution of the sperm versus contribution of the egg.